All right, so now we're going to go on to the EKG basics um, regarding the EKG printout. So here's just a basic EKG tracing documenting only one heart cycle, so one beat of the heart. All of this will give you a clinical picture into what is actually happening within the heart. So let's first by starting, you're going to have an isoelectric line, which is just going to be your resting heart. So without it heart beating, without it repolarizing, without anything happening in the heart, you're going to have this isoelectric line on that tracing. That's just going to be your resting heart. Next, you're going to have a small upward deflection. That deflection is going to be called the P wave. And that P wave is going to be representing atrial depolarization. Atrial depolarization, like I said before, you're going to have your SA node create an impulse. That impulse is going to travel through the atria, causing that muscle to contract. And that action potential causing the muscle to contract will be represented in the P wave. Next, you're going to be having a QRS complex. The QRS complex is going to represent your ventricles depolarizing. So with your P wave, it's going to be your atria, the QRS, ventricle depolarization. So you've got a little line here. You've got a little time between your atria contracting and your ventricles contracting. That allows your atria to pump blood into your ventricles. The ventricles pump blood to your lungs or your body. And you've got a small little space here. And that small space is thanks to the conduction system. As covered earlier, your AV node and your bundle of Hiss slowly uh, kind of slow down that action potential. And that gives your time for your atria to contract, which then gives your time for your ventricles to contract. It just causes that little pause in between the two. So you've got your QRS complex. This is going to be a Q wave. The first deflection down after your P wave will be a Q wave. First deflection positive will be an R wave. Let's see, there's an S wave. That's going to be your second downward deflection. Then you've got this second hump, which is going to be your T wave. Your T wave is going to be ventricular repolarization. So that's going to correspond with phase three um, of your action potential cycle, which we described on the myocardium earlier. So phase three is when the potassium is going out. It's going to reset. Repolarization occurs from the epicardium to your endocardium. Um, so this is going to be your T wave. Well, we're missing something here. We see atrial depolarization, ventricle depolarization, ventricle repolarization, what happens to atrial repolarization? That's actually a good point to make. Um, your P wave, your atria depolarize first, so it's going to contract, and atrial repolarization occurs somewhere in this time. Your ventricles have a lot more muscle mass, and the more muscle mass you have, the, uh, the bigger your EKG tracing will show. The atria really just don't have as much, um, so its repolarization gets lost within the cycle. Um, the ventricles predominate. So atrial repolarization does occur. It just occurs somewhere down in this time, and it gets a little fuzzy on, uh, on, on the EKG tracing. So another good point to make is electrical signals always precede mechanical signals. So your EKG is going to follow the electrical tracings of the heart. It'll notice that when the SA node contracts or depolarizes, it's going to cause that action potential. It's going to send an action potential down through your atria. That's going to be an electrical pulse. That electrical pulse will cause a mechanical pulse. It's going to cause your muscle cells to contract. But your EKG will pick up the electrical signal. And that electrical signal will always slightly precede. So if this is the electrical signal, that might be your mechanical signal. So your electrical signal is going to be recognized first, then you're going to contract. But it's just going to be kind of a, like a almost instantaneous thing, but um, electrical always precedes mechanical. So we've got the basic uh, wave deflections here. Now let's go into a little more um, a little more deep look at this. So what we have is 
we have a PR interval. The PR interval will be measured from the beginning of the P wave, and then that will go to the very beginning of the QRS um, cycle. So I guess I didn't draw that very well, but what you're going to have is you're going to have the P wave, the beginning of the P wave, so the P wave indicates that the atria are going to be contracting. That's going to be, that should be connected, that's going to connect to over here, which is going to be your QRS cycle, and the P wave is the time that it takes from your SA node to get your left and your right ventricle, or atria, for that action potential, so this is your SA, sorry, I'm kind of going off at a tangent, this is your SA node, here's your AV node, it's the time that it takes from your SA node for the impulse action potential to reach your AV node, go down your bundle of Hiss, down your bundle branches, left and right, Purkinje fibers, and then at that moment, that's when it stops. So we haven't we haven't contracted the septum yet, we haven't contracted the rest of the ventricles yet, we've just contracted the atrium. So what the, this is the PR interval, what that's going to be is it's going to be the time that it takes your atria to contract, that signal to reach through the conduction system here, nothing below the atria has contracted yet, just the atria contracted, the signal's gone through the system, but it hasn't activated any muscle yet. That's going to be your PR interval. Then you've got your ST segment. So your ST segment is going to be from your S wave down to the beginning of your T wave. ST seg. Your ST segment is going to be another kind of uh, clinical picture that you can do. So your QRS is going to be your ventricle depolarization. So your ventricles have depolarized. You can tell that we're on that isoelectric line. We started off this one by describing the isoelectric line. Your ST segment, for the most part in a normal, healthy heart, is going to be on your isoelectric line. Your ST segment represents the time that your ventricle is just depolarized to the beginning of your ventricle repolarization. So it's that, it's that time between your heart contracting and then relaxing. And that's going to be represented by your ST segment. So a long ST segment means your heart's contracted, it'll be a while before it repolarizes. A short ST segment would be contract and repolarize almost instantly.